Okay, so in this video, we will find the following integral. So the integral of e to the 3x over e to the 2x minus 1 with respect to x. And it may not be clear how to attack this problem. Let me rewrite the integral in what may look at first as a trivial rewriting, but hopefully it will make the problem a little more explicit. Instead of e to the 3x, I will write e to the x cubed. If you double exponentiate, you of course multiply the exponents. And instead of writing e to the 2x, I will write e to the x all squared. And hopefully now, the problem is a bit more transparent. If you think of e to the x as a single variable, what you have in both cases is a polynomial in terms of e to the x. e to the x cubed is a polynomial in terms of e to the x. e to the x squared minus 1 is a polynomial in terms of e to the x. So what you have here is a rational function in terms of e to the x. So we can make the following substitution. We can let v be e to the x. And this is now our rationalizing substitution, which will transform the integral into one of a rational function in terms of v. So if you cube v, of course you get e to the x all cubed, which is of course e to the 3x. And if you square v, you get e to the x all squared, which of course is e to the 2x. All we're missing now is our differential. So the differential of v is, well, the derivative here will be e to the x, therefore e to the x times dx. We want to find dx in terms of v, but if you look here, e to the x is again v. So this is simply v dx. So you can, of course, solve for dx by dividing across by v. And so dx is quite simply dv over v. And now we can make our substitution. So we have the integral of e to the x cubed v cubed over e to the x squared or e to the 2x v squared minus 1 times dx which is dv over v. Well we can make one simplification v cubed over v is v squared. And again, we see that our substitution had the desired effect. We went from this integral, which may look intimidating, to one of a simple rational function in terms of v. So now we use, of course, our method of partial fraction. Well, the first step, of course, is long division, as 2 is equal to 2. This will be a rather short long division. And we're done. Our remainder is a constant term, so of degree 0. 0 is less than 2. So this is the end result of our long division. So v squared over v squared minus 1 equals its quotient 1 plus its remainder over the divisor, v squared minus 1. Well, the integral of 1, of course, with respect to v is simply v. So we can break the 2 up. So we'll have v plus the integral of. And now how do we integrate 1 over v squared minus 1 with respect to v. Well, after long division, of course, the next step is to try and decompose the rational function coming from the remainder of the long division into a sum of partial fractions. And the first step, of course, is to factor the denominator completely. This is a very easy factorization. v squared minus 1 is v times v minus 1 times v plus 1. So let's do so. So 1 over v squared minus 1 
is 1 over v minus 1 times v plus 1, which equals both have a power of 1, so they will yield a single partial fraction over v minus 1 and over v plus 1. As both factors are linear factors, both numerators are constants, so AB. As always, we want to go from an equality between two rational functions to an equality between polynomials. So we multiply across by v squared minus 1. So on the left, we're left with 1, which will equal a times v minus 1 times v plus 1 over v minus 1. These will cancel, so a times v plus 1. And by the same argument, we'll be left with b times v minus 1. And here you have again two options. You can choose v to be negative 1 and then 1, or you can multiply out and regroup the constant terms and the multiple of v's, as you wish. Let's just pick two values of v. So we'll pick v to be 1 first. So if v is 1, well, the left-hand side is always 1. So we'll get 1 plus 1, 2 times a plus 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 b. So, if 1 equals 2 a, of course a is 1 half. And if you choose v to be uh, negative 1, and what's interesting here, by this choice of v, is it doesn't really make sense with the initial substitution. If you look back, v was e to the x, and e to the x for real values of x is always truly positive. But even though it doesn't make sense to pick v to be negative 1 with respect to the original substitution, if we ignore this and we focus on this integral only, then the value of negative 1 for v makes perfect sense. So we have now 1 equals negative 1 plus 1 is 0, so a vanishes. Negative 1, negative 1 is negative 2, so negative 2b. Multiply both sides by negative 1 half, and of course b is negative 1 half. And now we can easily integrate our rational function. Let me do it here, as it will require very little space. So we had what? And I'll also drag the v into this. If I call the original integral i, this is a sequence of equality, so this is still i. So i is equal to v plus the integral of 1 over v squared minus 1. As always, we do not integrate this directly, but we integrate its partial fraction decomposition, so a half over v minus 1. plus b, which is minus a half, so minus one half over v plus one dv equals, well, v, we can factor a half of both of these functions, so plus one half, and if we do so, we're left with one over v minus one, which integrates to the ln of v minus one, minus the integral of one over v plus one, which, of course, integrates to the ln of v plus 1, and of course, plus c. So all we must do now is return to a function of x. Well, if you go back, v was already a function of x. v is e to the x, so now we just replace v in our expression by e to the x. So what do we have? We have e to the x plus a half of the ln of e to the x minus 1 minus the ln of e to the x plus 1 plus, of course, c. And this is our final answer. If you wanted to, again, this is really a change, an aesthetic change. You have a difference between two logarithms. So you could trade this up for a single logarithm, but now of a quotient. And whichever one you choose, 
is irrelevant. But just to see the difference, we have e to the x plus a half. And again, all I'm using here is the following property of logarithmic functions, ln of a minus ln of b for any a and b. So ignoring our previous work, the ln of a minus the ln of b is the ln of the quotient of a and b. So we have this here, so I could write this as the ln in, of course, absolute value of e to the x minus 1 over e to the x plus 1 plus, of course, c. And both are equally good, right? In the one hand, you have two logarithmic functions, but they both have a simpler argument. In the other hand, you have a single logarithmic function instead of two, but you have a slightly more complicated argument. Which one is better? I will let you be the judge of it.